Hello everyone and welcome to the final round, final nine of the MVP Open at Maple Hill. I'm Erica Stinchko. And I'm Madison Walker. We are the two hockeys. Honk honk. We saw Katrina open up her lead to five strokes on the front nine. Joining her on the lead card, we have Kona Panis, Paige Pierce, and Haley King. The front nine was a little bit of a struggle for our lead card. Not as much green as we would expect out here, but that, this course can play hard to anyone on any day. Checking in on the leaderboard, we see Tiger Borth is the only person under par for today's round. Hole 10 is a par 3, 281 feet straight uphill towards this castle wall. It's definitely possible to get inside the circle for a putt, but it can be a pretty difficult, very elevated putt. And if you hit this wall, uh, it can cause massive rollaways. Storming the castle can result <laughs> in catastrophe. <laughs> X3 from Katrina. So much power. We saw her yesterday so close to the wall that she had to throw like an overhand putt where she couldn't even see the basket. So I think she's far enough away that she might be able to see the basket today. Yeah, it was like a tomahawk putt. Yeah. Like what a funny problem. God, wow, wow. they throw far. <clears throat> Smashing it up this hill. 281 plays like probably around 330, 340. Something like that. Plus, it's pretty much a pure hyzer the whole way. You can kind of throw a flip up and get tricky if you need to, but there will be no flexing at all. Haley grip locking a little bit. That seems to be a common issue off the tee. Finding the Christmas trees, but it looks like she might have ping ponged out back into the fairway. Wow. Hey. And she lands on the good side, too. It's an easier putt if you're pin high like that. In? Oh! Great run. Leaving herself a little bit of a death putt, but she's probably not even thinking about that because she's so comfortable on the green. So much height to contend with on these putts. And Katrina able to putt a little bit more normally, but the angle is still just too steep. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> Paige carding the birdie. Finding some more green. Haley saving her par. Great comeback cut. I think this back nine definitely favors the distance throwers yeah, that we have on this card. Lot. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see. It's definitely not over by any means. Any of these ladies can can start a run out here. Definitely. To there, chase Katrina. There's only two birdies on the day on that hole. We got to watch Paige and Kat Mersch, also another big arm. Hole 11 is 664 feet. The first 350 to maybe 360 feet, you carry this Christmas tree farm field of huge bushy trees. Ideally, you get out to this green landing zone so you don't have to worry about the trees because they definitely make for some technical footing and throws. You want to get over the second patch of Christmas tree and these two big guardian trees to the green that where the basket is perched up on a rock wall. It creates kind of a death putt situation because it drops off behind the wall as well. This is a tough hole. But if you can get over that initial line of trees, it definitely takes away strokes that could be ga easily gained. I have a feeling they'll make this hole look easy. Yeah. This was a ripping tailwind, and discs were definitely getting played around with in the air. Big drops. Page way down there. She'll have one little tree perhaps to contend with. Trina going for the hyzer line. Looks like she gets a little slip and grip. Um, mm. Doesn't quite find the other side. She's not going to have much from there. Still goes way far, though, because those trees protrude a little further down the fairway than they do if you just go right up the middle where Kona's going. Looks like she might be hyzering out to the left side and finding the trees. Yeah, unfortunately, those trees are even more dense than the short trees. So she made it to the, you know, the level of the clearing, but just it's almost left. worse there yeah. than if you're short. Oh, this is too turnt. She's headed towards the tee pad of 12. Catches the last couple of big trees that guard that tee pad. They're not fun. They are not fun over there. <laughs> Spoken from experience, it sounds like. <laughs> 
Haley just trying to get out of this trouble. She grip locks a little bit that sidearm and finds the Christmas trees about 100 feet from the basket. Big patent pending. That looks like maybe just a putter trying to get as close as possible. Good shot. Yeah, You can see how these trees take the birdie out of play almost immediately. Yeah, you just can't get a comfortable swing in the trees. It's not like other tree branches where you can kind of rip through the leaves. No, these branches do not allow that. Paige with his one tree just <laughs> all up in her business. Unable to capitalize. Looks like nobody able to find the green, which is so surprising here from our lead card. Haley, again, can't get a good swing, but she still gets up and down. Mm -hmm. Kona completely blind, lining up a tomahawk or a thummer. A thummer. Yeah, yeah this is a Star Destroyer, and Kona says that she grew up throwing thummers, so this felt natural for her. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Looked great. Looked natural. Nice floaty upshot from Paige for her par. Forehand chip shot from Katrina. Surprisingly, only three birdies on the day. That was less than yesterday. That tailwind on the tee, I think, definitely probably put a lot of people in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. And then from that point, you're just trying to recover, and it's difficult to do. Right. The other two days, it was an opposite wind, mm -hmm. so... Uh, Natalie Ryan, Kat Merch, and Stacey Ronsley finding the threes. Tight. Good pars from our lead card, though. Finding some trouble off the tee. Still all carding the star par. Little flag action. She slows down, though. Makes the putt no prob. We're really bad at mentioning how there are a lot of backups on the course, like mm -hmm. this hole in, in particular and the next hole. So keep in mind that we're standing, it's chilly, it's sprinkly for, you know, 15 minutes at a time before throwing. On every hole. Yes. Yeah. Hole 12 is 701 <clears throat> feet. You want to throw somewhere as far up as hillside as you can. If you take the right side, bring you bring those Christmas trees into play. Uh, then you want to throw up to the mouth of this gap here before throwing down through this wooded tunnel all the way to the pin. Very difficult hole. I think it's been playing as like the first or second most difficult every day. Mm -hmm. It is again the most difficult hole on the course today. It averaged as a full stroke over par for the FPO field. I think she <laughs> might have slipped, but but it, it's it's good. It was kind of a grip lock, but it gets over everything somehow way up the hill. That was an absolute smash. <laughs> Another X3 from Katrina. This might hyzer too much into the left side trees. Yeah, she gets a little slip as well. Early releases, a little nose up. She's on the edge, and it can be difficult even to get to the top of the next, you know, hill mm -hmm. to get to the mouth of the gap to have a look. Kona pushing these trees a little bit, and this is a good shot as long as it doesn't hyzer too much. Yep. That's just fine. It's impressive to see these lead card ladies with every bit of distance they need, but still showing how difficult this tee shot is. Haley with a Zeus. It's a little too turned over. It needs to stay in the air long enough to get past the trees. Oof. Yeah. You're not really going to see anybody else up that far on the side of the hill. It might be a good spot because she'll be kind of level. I wonder if she wanted to finish straighter or yeah. if she likes that, like if that's what she was going for. I've seen her grip lock it right over there a few times, almost like that's the plan. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> Katrina, well done from that, that awkward stance. She's kind of on the left side um, and we'll have a chance to save her par. Kona reaching the mouth of the gap, sliding down. She'll be a little tucked on the left-hand side. There's a lot more trees over there, but there's some gaps. Yeah, they're small, but they're there. Paige way up here with a fierce in hand. Pretty straight look. Um, this is too far to the right. Ooh. That's honestly a good kick. That's a great kick. The right side is so brutal. There's no gaps. It 
because a lot of times force is just a pitch out. Katrina even uh, farther in the middle than I thought. <sighs> Catches that one tree. That was a great looking shot. She kept it nice and low with the nose down. Kona with a nice little gap here, like you mentioned. Great shot. You can see how dark it's getting in the woods. It was cloudy. Oh, nice and at this point, probably around 645. <laughs> Yeah, I it was crazy. You were in the woods at yeah six o'clock, and it felt like nine p.m. <laughs> nice little floaty approach from Katrina that checks up right next to the pole. Only twenty nine percent of the field with a par on this hole. Seventy one percent with a bogey or worse. Only two people getting inside circle two for birdie. Big mm. airballing. And has a kind of a large comebacker, but she's usually good for these. Ah, uh, mm. not this time. Kona for her par. There we go. Yep, no one able to find the birdie in today's round. I feel like that feels like an eagle, 100%. Yeah, a beagle for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Paige saying hopefully the spotters have some flashlights they actually are now starting to hurry some of the other cards ahead mm -hmm. um, kind of inch warm warming them along the fairway and having like three car cards yeah playing. three cards like playing on a hole at the same time yeah it's crazy it was interesting yeah hole 13 is downhill 473 plays like 350 um, you have some options here you can throw a sidearm that goes straight missing this big tree a lot of people will throw the backhand um, with a mid-range or slower disc, but a fairway driver works as well. It can just get a little more ground play and be a little further left than you want. The trees on the right, you can get through there if you flip something over, but it also is really tricky if you get knocked down as soon as you enter. Kona missing a little bit left. It was a pretty, pretty awful win for this hole. It was mm -hmm. a head right to left cross. So just highlighting the angle if you throw on that hyzer that you need to really carry through this gap. If you choose to throw fairway or even distance driver, you're basically trying to hit the gap and then hope it hits a tree mm -hmm. and sits. A little too far to the right, but she gets kicked right back into the middle. That's a great kick. Should Usually those trees will just suck you right in. Katrina disking down again to that trusty M2. Kaiser flipping it perfectly. Yes, the <laughs> wind, wind has no effect on this disc. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's right on the edge of the circle. Wow. Unbelievable. I think mid-range is, a flipping mid-range is the disc for this hole. Wow. This is also wonderful, but again, this looks like a little bit maybe faster disc. Whoa. Or was it a mid, I'm not sure what that was, but she's be just outside the circle as well. Does not catch anything but still inside circle too deep this plate is the third most difficult hole must have just been because of the wind yeah and the cold and the dark <laughs> and the waiting yeah <laughs> it was the wind was awful for this hole it made it so much more difficult these ladies make it look easy but it was not carrying down the hill leaving her just inside the circle putt for her par this is a, a par three where most people are going to be just trying to get up and down for the par. It's not a hole where you're super disappointed if you don't leave with a birdie. It's really tough to get to the screen. It's so touchy. Oh, no. Sit. Okay. Good soft run stays close for her par. Only two people finding the circle for birdie. Ah, oh, Paige almost nailing it for her birdie. Great and, effort. And only six people finding circle two, so... It is tough to get down here. There was one birdie on the day from Deanne Carey. She made a big putt. She was on my card. Great drive and then a circle two putt, I think. Or just inside the circle. But 60% of the field was a bogey or worse. So FEO Field had a, had a hard time with this hole today.
Yep, our lead card kind of struggling on this one. Mm -hmm. Haley's ready to be done. <laughs> Playing in the drizzle sucks. Yeah. <laughs> We'll check in with the leaderboard before we head into the final few holes. Everyone over par at this point. Heather Young, the only one under par, oh, actually. I missed that. Uh, pretty straightforward. Hole 14, we got another big crowd for this big, huge water carry, 286 feet. Uh, you really have to push the water on the right side the whole time before you fade over to the left to play this well for birdie or an ace run or, you know, whatever you want to do. You'll see a lot of people erroring left. Not quite giving it all of the room it needs on the right side. Katrina does not have that problem. Yeah, she ain't scared. She gets a straight kick and unfortunate roll. Yeah. yeah, it won't be. Eh, it's kind of a death putt. It's a scary putt. Yeah, it's unfortunate she wasn't rewarded a bit better. Again, see how much you have to trust the disc over the water the whole way to land it close. It's very intimidating. Paige gets a bit of a skip too, but she'll still be still be inside the circle. 20 foot death putt for her birdie. Kona looking to follow suit here. She's throwing a destroyer. Trusting it over the water. It just needs to dig and not skip too much. Decision time. She's just at circle's edge there. Oof, that's a scary one. Mm hmm. Haley opting for a straighter route with, I think, her buzz. Lays down softly. She'll be just outside the circle. She's the type of player that I'm sure will run this. Oh. 38% of the field finding circle one off the tee. Oh. Stays in bounds. Thank you for the wall. <laughs> Tournament staff. <laughs> Surprising to see only half yes, of our wow. lead card in the circle, but it doesn't matter for Katrina. She'll still make the putt. <laughs> and with that, I mean, she's really kind of not running away with it yet, but... She's definitely pulling her, away slowly. Yeah, putting her foot <laughs> on the gas steadily. Steadily. What a putt. The crowd on hole 14 was awesome, too. Super supportive. Another good team sports green. <laughs> Paige taking her time on this death putt. <laughs> Cans of birdie. Oh. Kona a little too high, splashes out left side. She'll be forced to take the bogey. So supportive <laughs> you have to walk right by this crowd Hole 15 is a tunnely wood shot here. You just need to throw as straight as you can off the tee. It is a good idea to uh, get something that will have a late drift to the right around these trees and then fade back a little bit to the left. Um, that's probably the best way to get a look at the birdie. It is. Look how dark it is. It is dark at this point. I'm sure the camera is making it look lighter than it actually was because when I went through this hole about four cards before this, it was dark. Great straight shot. The main goal here is just to get over the initial ditch, and then it's a pretty easy par. If you hit early, it's so hard to save your par here. Passion from Paige. She gets away with it, doesn't hit anything. 
and lands just outside the circle? At 323 feet, you would think a lot of the FPO field would be able to find the inside of the circle, but um, it looks like only three or four people were able to find the, their way. Only 8% of the field found their way inside circle one off the tee. Haley, with her heat, not quite able to follow Paige through every tree and kicks, I think, somewhere around circle two. Kind of hard to see. <laughs> Where's the night vision, GK? <laughs> wow. That, that's one of the best shots I've seen on the hole. That was really easy to see as it hit every single gap <laughs> perfectly. Oh, no. Catches the tree right around circle's edge and it knocks her straight down. Am I lost? <laughs> Deep in the woods. That was, she had a worse kick off the tee oh. than I thought. Wow. Yeah, Haley was way down in that ditch. Again, showing us how difficult it is to save the par when you have that kind of earlier kick. Katrina with a long look for her birdie. At this point, she doesn't really need birdies. She just needs to... Finish strong and, and maintain. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird because I can't tell who's throwing because it's I, dark. <laughs> I don't even know how to I think commentate that was Paige. on this. I think that yeah. was Paige. Uh, Kona unable to get the birdie. Yeah, that last putt, putt before Kona was Paige, and this is her comebacker for par. There we go. She was five over, I believe, after the front nine. So she's playing really clean on this back nine. Like we said, it favors the distance, and she's looking comfortable. Fortunately, Haley with the double, finding a lot of trees on this hole. That can happen so quickly. Yeah, I kind of lost Haley in the woods there. So mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry about Looks that, like guys. She, she lost Haley in the woods, too. Yeah, yeah. Hole 16 is a new pin and pad location. It's another very tricky line where you want to throw something that goes straight for a little while, turns right, and hopefully carries over this rock wall and finishes back to the left. No out of bounds, just a really tough 400 foot hole in the woods. In the dark. Hey guys, Swarm Digital, you saw their logo in the drone flight. They design, develop, and maintain websites. If you're a business or a disc golfer that needs some website work, uh, give them a call. Mention GK Pro for a free consultation. Their phone number is in the link in the description of the video. Katrina just goes through everything <laughs> on the right-hand side. Um, she still gets oh, down there in circle two. That is such an early tree hit from Paige. Yeah, Paige with the definitely opposite problem. And it is going to be tough from there. That's an understatement. Kona turns it over, gets a little nose down out of the hand. It's she's, not a bad spot, though. No, she's in the middle. It'll be kind of weird. Maybe she might not be able to see the basket fully on the back side of that hill. Ooh, Haley. She's going for the Katrina route, but she catches a tree and kicks right, yeah. which is. It's dark. It's the heart of darkness in there. <laughs> Paige still had some footing, though, and able to able to get some good distance on it, but she throws a, a left early releases. She'll be down in the bog, but with a look at, at a putt. Haley looking like she doesn't have a lot of options. Forced to pitch out and hopefully carry back towards the green. She finds the little brook that runs through the middle of the fairway and sits right at around 70 feet from the pin. Yeah, rough couple of holes for Haley here. Just early kicks, finding terrible spots. Kona with a chance to get her par here. Can't see the basket. I figured that um, doesn't quite get the turn on it, but she's inside the circle. She'll be in the shul a little bit, forced to have some bushes to contend with on her putt. Katrina, after getting through everything, has a really neat, easy up and down sidearm pitch to the green. Paige throwing back. In, wow, she got so far down here. Yeah, She's she like did. pin high. Deep. Yeah, deep, throwing back towards the green. Only one person found the circle off the tee. 
but there were three birdies. Natalie Ryan, Lauren Butler, and Casey Pennington finding the twos, and that is so impressive on this hole. Lauren had at least a hundred foot putt. <laughs> yep, it was far. It was awesome. Erica and I's cards were playing on the same hole yeah. at the same time, <laughs> trying to beat the dark. It was interesting. Paige with the unfortunate bogey as we come down the stretch. Katrina with a nice par there. Haley, another double bogey. Kind of running out of steam. This course can beat you down. It's really hard to stay up, especially when you're looking down this fairway on hole 17. Oh man, tiny little gap. It's hard for everybody in the car to get through. Usually at least one person hits one of those trees. You're trying to get up this hill as far as you can. Um, usually the left side is a little bit better to open up the gap. But with this, their distance, they can get all the way up the hill and then have a straight look down at this basket goes downhill to an elevated pin, creates a lot of difficulty on the putting green, especially when it's dark outside. Mm -hmm. It was a little windy too, definitely chilly. The rain had finally slowed down a little bit, but everything was still wet. Yeah, we haven't really been able to see the rain very well. Mm -hmm. But um, it was like, it's like a light drizzle for probably half the round. Mm -hmm. Four, I believe it's you. Okay. That was a pretty good shot. Probably just like a little bit shorter than she wants to, do, to be with her distance, but uh, she'll have like a sidearm or an Anheuser putter to try to get to the green. Paige also making it through the gap. And this looks beautiful, way up there. So just to speak again on the difficulty of this FPO layout at Maple Hill this year, literally every hole averaged over par. Whoa. That's that's crazy. I just realized Mind that. Mind bending. <laughs> yeah. It is grueling out there. Kona taking a bit of a, a wider hyzer route um, and gets way up there to get that kind of that straighter look at the pin. Haley going sidearm. I haven't seen this yet. I love that play. She you hear her say, oh my God. <laughs> Came out a little bit early, but it still gets finds its way all the way down to the corner. She'll be pinched off on her approach, but it looks like she'll be able to have a little backhand turnover shot. Man, what an aggressive play. Like is she thinking eagle? She's probably thinking, I don't want to turn my back to this gap. Yeah. <laughs> wow, Paige with a beautiful shot, gets perfect ground play and parks it for her birdie. Katrina with a bit sharper angle to the green. Also pretty perfect, maybe 15 feet. God, they make this look like an easy shot, but it is so weird and yeah. almost like ewing back. Well, they, they're a little bit farther up than most of the field, so True. it's not quite as difficult of an angle for them. It's not quite as an aggressive 180 degrees. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Or oh, oh, Haley. Throws a roller right into a stump. I think we missed her next shot, or is that where she rolled? I don't know. She looks done with the round. <laughs> we also sound done with commenting. Yeah. <laughs> We're so sorry. So sorry. <laughs> Birdie putt for Katrina. So solid on hole 17, really holding it together. Maintaining and, uh, her play. And that gets her under par for the entire round, too. Mm -hmm. Just playing clean out there. Can you imagine being like, oh, yeah, hole 17 is what kept me under par. <laughs> Instead of putting on it 70 times. In my dreams. <laughs> Kona also for birdie. Oh, yeah. Page two is parked for birdie. That one feels good. Three birdies. There was only six birdies on the day. Man, Haley gets a par even though she threw a roller into a stump six feet in front of her. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah. Impressive. Yeah. That's one way to do it. <laughs> Hole 18 is 467 feet. It is uphill the entire way, so it plays longer than that. The wall on the right is out of bounds. These trees on the left have a mando on the short side, so you have to go through that gap. You want to land out a little bit wide to the left to maybe set yourself up to be able to... Um, 
play aggressively to the green. There's a big crowd here in the grandstands. There's these trees you have to avoid. A lot of people will lay up as well to the drop zone um, that is there in case you do go out of bounds. Another really supportive, awesome spectator area. Yeah, everybody's here. Everybody's watching, cheering, making bets <laughs> on who's going to make the green. Excellent shot from Katrina. Age, I think this is a Zeus. She's going for big distance down there. She gets it. Hoping to... Way up there. Yeah, hoping not to contend with this one fir tree that they left out there to just mess with you. I think she's far enough where um, it won't mess with her too much. Kona looking to hold on to second place here. I'm trying to remember. I think Chase Card might be kind of pushing like i think Haley has fallen back a little bit we'll check in with the leaderboard shortly after this Haley with a heat a little pinched on this side probably just laying up yeah par is good here She'll be right next to the drop zone. Katrina, is... no need to run the green. Again, just just having to maintain at this point, but she still gives herself a putt. Yeah, she does. <laughs> Perfect layup. Another perfect layup. It's so interesting to play a course where one down is for the round is what keeps you in it. Like that's all you need. Just yeah. need to be right around even par every round. We saw her with a three down yesterday, and I think that was the hot round of the tournament in the FBO. Oh, oh yes, Paige. A couple birdies to finish it off. Love that. I believe that's good enough to get her a third place finish. Mm -hmm. I'm sure not what she was looking for, but way to stay strong through the end. Regardless of what happens, it feels cool to get on the green for birdie here. Only three people did it. Katrina with back-to-back -back victories last week at Delaware and this week as well. Um, both pretty commanding victories mm -hmm. as well. Coming off a world title, I feel like it's a little bit weird. You get a what people call a world's hangover and you just don't <laughs> play well the rest of the year, but Katrina is proving that stereotype incorrect. <laughs> Paige tapping in to give Katrina the honors here. Super clean tournament, solid win. It feels so good to take the W at Maple Hill. So demanding. You really have to have all the shots. And a good second place finish from Kona. Oh yeah. I know she feels good. Struggling a little bit mid season with her putt, but coming out super solid. Wonderful tradition here at yeah. Maple Hill. Just the drizzling rain. <laughs> <laughs> this year, second place felt good. They're like, we don't have oh, to do this. We don't want to do this. <laughs> the water was so cold. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the coolest traditions in disc golf, though. It is an honor to jump into Hole One's Pond, check back in with our lead card scores. A lot of green there in the back nine. Everyone cleaned it up. Um, but, I mean, at this point, you're really just trying to get through at even par. Um, Haley having a, sh a little bit of a rough time. Paige and Kona just a few strokes over par, and Katrina just a commanding victory. Yeah, congratulations, Katrina and Adam. Uh, Haley managing to hang on to fourth place there. Uh, so our lead card stays in the lead. Top ten right around even par. Um, even a plus five can keep you in the top five. They're playing super solid all weekend long. Heather with the hot round tying Katrina. 
as well. Thank you guys for hanging out with us um, for the final round of the MVP Open. Thanks again to GK Pro for the awesome FPO coverage. And Um, thanks, Steve Dodge and uh, to the Pro Tour for this amazing event. Heck yeah. Um, We're getting close to the end of the season, and we love having you guys hanging out and honking at us. We appreciate all your support. We do have some pins available. Um, Please contact me or Erica if you would like a Two Hot Geese disc golf pin. I'm Madison Walker. I'm Erica Stinchcomb. We're the Two Hot Geese. Honk. Honk.